so my sunflower is open too early so let me show you what I got growing in June hot weather so we've been coming down most mornings giving it a water but everything's growing so fast so let me show you what we got going so as the sun is rising we're going to start at the bottom of the plot and work our way out so the very last plot on the end is our spring onions and this one we've got spare which we've got some broccoli and then we've got some more broccoli in this one and then we've got another spare one with the blue cover on and in the back we've got cabbage so this is our competition cauliflowers they're going on a bit now but it's certainly not as good as the neighbour's cauliflower but they are giving it a secret ingredient and that's my cabbages on the end. So this bed has not been used and we've still got our swing and area here. It's getting a bit tatty now. So the roses here are coming out lovely. We took some of the roses home and the smell is wonderful. Some lovely roses. Absolutely lovely and loads of them still good to go. So this is some of the currants. And we've got a few currants growing on here now. And this is white currants. These were moved from the tunnel at the top. The next bed is the pumpkin bed and yes we did have a bit of a disaster there is a pumpkin here and we've got another one here they did get hit on the frost we had a little while ago and on the bed of frost is the blue squash and they got hit again but we do have some backups next bed along it's the garlic. This is really doing good now. It could come out soon. Now these are red onions. This is the garlic. Next bed along. There's two lots of garlic and some onions at the end. The next bed along. This is our competition cabbage. And as you can see. I trialled the netting and that's the blue netting, the green netting and the white netting and you know what it does actually look like the green one is doing better so this is my bucket garden down the side to which we've got potatoes garlic this was last year's chard it's interesting to see that grow up we still got a bucket of spuds from last year cauliflower gooseberry a couple of raspberries another rose strawberries and just some black currants on the end there which is not doing great this bed with the pots is not being used and then we've got some gardeners like tomatoes which are outside just using up some space the next bed along here is the Vegemon bed bed and as you can see the radish has gone a bit crazy the beans it's very slow taking off and charred 
got the lettuce, board beans and the potatoes on the end. Excuse the shadows. These also got hit by the frost, but they've recovered now. Next bed along, we've got this little plant on the end. I can't remember what it's called. Can you remind me what it's called? Send me a comment. The bees certainly love it. And then we've got our strawberry bed. So these are coming out quite good. But then you need to be covered. And we've got a bit of a sunflower display coming on here. We've also planted some nasturtiums and hopefully these are climbing ones and the plan is to climb up the beans. This might be for sunflower challenge. We'll see. And in the pot at the end we've got an abandoned carrots and my da daughter decided to wash her stones in our pond. So that is a bit dirty. You know, just scanning back here. This is the tomatoes outside. And this is the final bed, which we've got some onions, lettuce, some leeks, and some more red onions. So that's all the beds down the side of the polytunnel. Just lying around as you do, we've got a tray of cabbage that's been a bit uh, worse for wear in the polytunnel and my strawberry planter, which is a petunia planter. So these were growing the seeds and a bit neglected, so I put them in the pot. So the next bed along is the strawberry bed. These are runners taken from the other one we just saw around the corner. And they're coming out nicely. And on the back, we've got the Gardener's Delight tomatoes in the rings and the final board beans. This is a courgette. We've got hidden hair, which is doing quite well. That didn't get affected by the frost. And we've got another cabbage or cauliflower. I think this is the cauliflower, which is another competition one. But I will show you what we're competing at just over there. So uh, we've got some way to go. So we have some sunflowers. And this is the brassica bed. So we've got sprouts doing really good. Some cabbage, the broccoli that was in here had been replaced. So now we've got savoy cabbage. We've got sprouts and more sprouts. In the end here is the runners. These are red runners. This one, single one here, is the longest runner. And then we've got some French beans that are very worse for wear, but we do have some spares in the tunnel. Then we've got our normal runner beans. These are coming on great now. So I'll walk through the middle here and we go on to the next bed. And this is the peas. The peas are looking marvellous. This alderman peas, a wonderful kind of peas, they're so quick and they've even got peas showing now which is, which is absolutely wonderful. Such a good peas, alderman, try it, it's good, amazing. So in the root bed we've got some no, I might need some help here. We planted either turnip or swede. 
in this row. I was given a tray by the neighbour and we've got all the trays muddled up. So what do you think? Is this turnip? Or is this sweet? Let me know. I'll also send some down the end, I'll show you. And this is the beetroot. Beetroot's doing magnificent. Really likes it here. And then we've got some carrots. First time we've done carrots in the ground. This is Amsterdam. And then the next bed is parsnip. But mm, not sure. Anyone see any parsnips? Anyone? Not so sure. Anyway, the next line is purple kohlrabi. No idea what you do with this. But it looked good. I'm gonna have to go this side. And then we've got some calabrese, which is doing good. And then under here are some cauliflowers my daughter's planted. And this is the other one. Is this the swede? Or is this the turnip? They look very much the same. So let me know. And this is the mushroom trays I've been using as a cover just to protect them. And lastly on the end is the leeks. And they're looking really good. So this is my netted tunnel and I think this is such a great idea and if anyone's got a polytunnel frame just put a net around it it's gone crazy in here but on the outside we've got a tomato experiment so we've got three alicantes three gardener's delight and three marmalade and looking at the difference there isn't much different. So let's have a look at the tunnel. These sprouts are amazing. Let's have a look. So on the right, we've got sprouts. And we put the strawberries in here because the birds was picking on them. But they finally finished, they've been all eaten because they were in the tunnel. And something munched all those. On the left is the cauliflower. I think we have some cauliflower in one of these. Here we go. But they're amazing in this tunnel. And we've got some spare cabbages in here. And I've also done some tomatoes in the back. And so I want to put some tomatoes in a cage, but then we've also done it in a different cage too. And then the black, the blueberries. And the blueberries doesn't look that exciting really. No flowers, so I'm not sure what's happened with those. And then this is of course the strawberries. But if anyone's got a tunnel going spare, just put a net around it. It's incredible. Look at these sprouts. You can even see the sprouts starting to form on here. Incredible. So this here is my sand pit bed, which is uh, sadly looking a bit worse for wear. Doesn't get a lot of sun here. And the cabbages, the lettuces are looking a bit off. But this is the rocket. And the rocket's looking good. Quite a peppery rocket that. And this is some parsnips. And a few onions. And some strawberries. These are coming out now. 
these are all runners the dahlias really need putting on and the bottle brush is coming out now which is good to see so everything is looking really really good it's just had a bit of a water but it is only seven o'clock in the morning I have to sort this cage out I was umming and ahhing whether to net it or not but we managed to do it this is just using offcuts from scaffolding netting so when we go my kind neighbour also added a bit of a roof to the top and it's looking really good so in here we've got the straw the tomato bed so we've got six alicante six gardener's delight and six marmalade and i'm in the shadows again i want to see what these are like in the tunnel compared to the polytunnel a slow start but they're doing good and then also another challenge we got is growing a chili outdoors so three plot holders have been given the same chili plant and we're growing chilies and see what yield we can get from our chilies so we like a challenge one of my biggest tasks this year this month I was to actually clear this raspberry bed so we've had a bit of a de-weed and we've left a few of the raspberries in there are so many dead ones it's not been looked at for at least two or three years and I've actually put a couple of cabbages down here as they were spares this is the broccoli the 60 day broccoli I bought from home and then uh, just a few odd bits around but I'm really pleased with this and I think this is a grape in the middle which I want to grow in here but I'm thinking next year is to wipe out all these raspberries make a bed across the top wipe out all these and just have a whole brassica bed a walk-in brassicas that'd be so good so good I'll show you the sunflowers at the end of the cage at the end this is the update on the sunflower challenge but I'll show you that when we get to the end so let's go and have a look in the polytunnel this is one of my favorite parts of the morning it's walking in and looking in the polytunnel as you can see it's not been tidied and it's all work in progress still but I'll just sort of give you a quick tour before I go home so this is Tigerella and we've also got some fruits and then we've got Gardener's Delight which is doing good and we've also got fruit here which is really good the marigolds have gone crazy hmm. and we've got a random tomato coming up here it's more marigolds so it calms down a bit here these are more gardeners delight tomatoes this is the parsnips from last year they're going into a flower now and then one more gardeners delight and then we've got the two romas from joe 
and taking for dinner and in between we did the radishes remember I asked what to put in between so I've done radishes in between this one and this one we've done onions in between and now they're growing then we've got alicante so we've got one, two, three, four, five alicantes and in the middle of this one we've got the carrots which are growing really quickly in the polytunnel and then we've got raised chilli this is growing from the seed and a marigold this is pepper anam anaheim and we've also dug up the potato from the veg in one bed bed and we put it in a flower pot so we'll see what a flower pot potato does and then these are the rest of the alicantes and we've got pepper colour spectrum so this is the peppers that we got in the polytunnel in the netted tunnel as the competition one and then in the end we've just got some peppers that we've just potted in parts and then three kale at the back so we don't look at this bit so we better move on so in the middle this is our potatoes in the buckets and I come back to the trays so this is the final board beans and this is my longest board bean self competition I thought that was quite good but these are coming out now now I've got this empty bed and I need to decide what to put in it I've put in four cabbages here but I don't know really whether I want to fill this with cabbages I want to do something else in here so I'm not sure so give me some suggestions on the end here there's two aquas so I've added this netting in here to go up the pole but they don't seem to be that active and my plan is to put these market more cucumbers on the other side where the garlic is and grow them up the trellis so I'm not sure which is the best idea so talking about the garlic I've got lots and lots of leeks and I'm wondering whether to put these in the polytunnel where the onions came out and where the garlic's going to come out or what, what else is better to go in here I've got a few bits and pieces left but I'm not sure on the end we've got a tomato in a bucket and a sunflower which is going on the container in this corner is the grape the grape is doing really good now it's climbing up these twine and we've got a lavender and some peas I wanted to try some peas in the tunnel and they've gone up really mad just going up the back so we've just got a random tray of tomatoes and then we go round to this side of the bed and this is chilies peppers mixed peppers anamhain and raised chilies then we go on to cucumbers so we've got six Socrates which are growing up these strings which I think is a good idea but I'm not sure if, if, if I'm doing it wrong then let me know it'd be interesting to know and then we have some more cucumbers and then in the end it's market more cucumbers we finally grew some more watermelons so these three are new melons and this little one if you remember is still doing exactly the same it's just doing nothing 
So I had a conversation yesterday saying that melons need a netting or some kind of frame. So I left this frame here to maybe attach it to the string and we have some kind of netting coming down. I planted two sunflowers at the back, which probably isn't ideal, but I did think the melon maybe woke up the sunflowers, I don't know. Anyway, this is some smaller melons. This is Emily, and on the end, can't remember. Can't remember. But there's a different type of melon. So um, these are growing up the vines now, up the uh, string. And we've got a random tomato. I don't know what he's doing there. But this is certainly better set up than last year. Last year I did the cucumbers in buckets and they instantly dried out. So they do like it in the soil for sure. I'll just show you what we've got on the trays. We're just trying to get as much out now. These trays are really hot. These polytunnel get so hot and the trays are just drying out like anything. So I'm losing more things than we've actually got now. So I'm just literally trying to get things out. So I'll just show you quickly what we've got on the trays. Here we have, the, we have three more watermelons, which is uh, spares. This was an experiment for iceberg lettuce with the, ice, with the Asda compost and normal compost. As you can see, the Asda one is pretty much rubbish. So a lot of trays are empty now because they've been being put out. And we've just got random things like one sweet corn. I don't know why. But we've got some leeks that's got to go out. Board beans I'm not too bothered about. There's another one sweet corn. We've got some sunflowers. And we've got some squashes. These are butternut squashes. Wanted to do the butternut squash. So, um... They're doing all right. On the bottom here we've got melon, striped tiger, dry as bone, some tomato, some leeks, marigolds, some dwarf beans. These are for the veg in one bed bed. Got a few little flowers going in here. It looks like a basil one, that does, doesn't it? Some lavender, this is good. Carnations, Sweet Williams. So we've got some leeks. This is the leeks I'm thinking about planting in the tunnel. And there's more leeks at the back. This could really come forward now because they're not getting much water or much attention. So we've got, these are the beefsteak tomatoes. This is Mrs. Green Thumb's tomato challenge for the biggest tomato. So they're just spare. We've got a few sweet corn. We've got some purple sprouting broccoli and random broccoli. And I'm not sure now whether this is fuchsia's growing, growing now. This has been in since 24, 1st of April. And there might actually be some fuchsias been a long time coming with the has. Anyway, next bit of long is the bottle. Tomato in a bottle. So it's still surviving. On the top row here we had some cabbage but that's not good. Some nasturtiums that looking dry. Some more um, sunflowers and more sunflowers. This is some of the swede or turnip. We haven't decided yet on this one too. 
Just a few peppers left. This is the Market Mall cucumbers. Might even try these outside. This is uh, some broccoli and this is a weed. Don't want that one. And this is my uni coolius, which is really good. Which is a shame nothing else came from that. Got a couple of cabbages, cauliflower, just random bits. We'll go on this tray next door. There's more random bits, some flour, some chilies. This is the fuchsias that I grew, which I'm quite pleased with. We've got a blue squash, which could go out. We've got a pepper with a tomato, which is pretty random. Cablo Nero, courgette, just random things here. Some more market, more cucumbers. Some patty pan squashes, just for some leeks, some, just one spinach, one cabbage. And then we've got some tomatoes in baskets. So I thought I'd try these. And then some more chilies and the French beans, which is for the veg and one bed bed. And then just some random peppers. So as you can see, we're pretty much done now. And it's looking really good. Well, as it's been so hot in the tunnel, I've had to move some of my seedlings outside. And although it's not ideal, it, it does give them a chance. So anyway, we've got some Cavolo Nero here and just some random tomatoes that we don't need more tomatoes. Some chimpanzees, some Cosmos, more tomatoes. This is some wallflowers, which is interesting. These were dying in the tunnel, but they've come out since I put them outside. This is some more of the mysterious Swede or turnips and some cabbages, more tomatoes, chard that's spare, cherry tomatoes, some peas in a basket, and then finally at the end, some strawberries and some onions in the corner. And we just look around the corner, we've got the pear tree. This year, last year, didn't actually do anything. But we do actually have somewhere. Can you see them? There was. Yeah. A pair. Finally, just down the side, we've got our carrots in containers and we've got the parsnips. So they're not doing too bad. And then we just ignore the junk and we just come to look at the pumpkin on the end. And this one was covered where the pumpkin on the other side wasn't. And that's made a difference. And we've got a second pumpkin just in there. So it does make a difference. So that's my plot tour for June. So I hope you find that interesting. <laughs> One thing I did do is make this bin for my nettles and oh my god I hear people say about it stinking and oh my god it does stick <laughs> oh it stinks it stinks <laughs> anyway so hope you enjoyed my plot tour there's been lots going on and it's been good being down here most mornings 
but I have had to go to work again now. So the, the early morning visits hasn't been so regular as what they were before. It looks like Mr. Moley's been. So anyway, thank you for watching. And if you're not subscribed, please subscribe and keep updated with what I got going. And I forgot to show you the sunflower challenge. But let me show you. So this is the update for the sunflower challenge from Nick's allotment diary. And this is my tallest sunflower in a bucket. And it was doing good. But now it's decided to flower. This was the height on the 21st. And now we got to June. And it's flowered. So, I don't think I'm in for a chance. But, we do have a second one. On the go. So we shall see. Have a look at these lupins. These lupins are mad. Look at them. They're really, really nice. One final challenge. We've started now. My neighbour wanted a challenge. So we've got a passion flower challenge. So at the bottom of my gate here, if you can see it, there's a passion flower. So we're growing each passion flower and the competition is to get the first one to flower. So this is my entry. If you can see it, I'm not sure if you can see it, but I'll show you anyway. So this is our passion flower and we're growing it up the gate. And these can take up these can grow up to five meters tall. So it will look nice all around my gate. We've moved it out from the edge of the tunnel so we can give it a chance to grow up. So we're looking forward to seeing that. So thank you for watching. And please subscribe, if not subscribe. Ring the bell. Get notifications when we post some more. And what better way to enjoy your cup of coffee sat in the allotment pot in the early hours of the morning. Just can't beat it. So thanks a lot. Cheers for now.